Please be seated. Good morning. I am Dr. James A. Grecken. In five days, it will be exactly 60 years that I stood here as the graduate with the distinction of the College of Osteopathic Medicine in the class of 1962. I am also an emeritus. <laughs> I'm also an emeritus member of the Board of Trustees of Des Moines University. As the Grand Marshal for this commencement ceremony, I am pleased to extend greetings to all gathered here today. It is indeed, indeed a great honor to make it known that Des Moines University will award degrees to our graduates in the College of Health Sciences, College of Podiatric Medicine and Surgery, and the College of Osteopathic Medicine. This ceremony, the 122nd in the history of Des Moines University, continues a rich academic tradition which began in 1899, when the first class of eight received degrees. In 2011, as chairman of the Board of Trustees of Des Moines University, I was appointed the leader of a search committee for its 15th president. I am now highly honored and very pleased to welcome to the podium that recipient of our committee's research and our current president, Dr. Angela L. Franklin, who serves as the presiding official at this commencement ceremony. Dr. Franklin. Good morning, and thank you, Dr. Grecken. Welcome to our students and guests who were able to join us today, and all of those watching with us virtually, to pay tribute to this great nation for the many freedoms we enjoy. Please rise for the national anthem. We are pleased that Rachel Wu, member of the class of 2022, and the College of Podiatric Medicine and Surgery, will lead us in singing our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say Star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the Beautiful, thank you, Rachel. 
Please remain standing for a moment of silent reflection and gratitude for our many blessings. Thank you. Please be seated. Welcome everyone to the 122nd commencement ceremony for Des Moines University, live and in person. Congratulations to the members of the DMU class of 2022, who after much hard work and perseverance are ready to help protect and improve the health of individuals, communities, and populations. After these many months and years of planning and preparing for the next exam, the next lab, the next clinical rotation, and even the next wave of coronavirus, please enjoy living in this moment. You have earned it. I also want to express my deepest gratitude to each of you for choosing your path. Graduates, you demonstrated extraordinary courage and resilience during your Des Moines University education. As the coronavirus tra tragically stole lives, reshaped our world, and sparked debates about science and health, you stayed the course toward careers of service. You know the path ahead will not be easy or simple, but you have the character, training, and fortitude to take on whatever lies ahead. We all can be thankful the world now has more than 400 additional DMU graduates who are prepared to lead in healthcare, public health, scientific research, and more. Thank you. We are joined on this day of celebration by DMU faculty, staff, and distinguished members of the university's board of trustees who contributed to your preparation and who are so proud of all that you have achieved. I want to recognize a few individuals who have been awarded emeritus status for years of educating, mentoring, and inspiring our students. The first became an emeriti faculty in 2020 when our commencement ceremony was fully virtual. So we're glad that this person was able to join us today to be honored in person. Dr. Kathy Mercuris. Dr. Mercuris joined DMU's physical therapy program as an instructor in 1988, two years before it graduated its first, very first class. That meant until she retired in 2020, she taught every student in the program. She served her profession as it transitioned from requiring a bachelor's degree to a master's degree to now a doctoral degree. She served the program and university as an associate professor, associate dean of the College of Health Sciences, and acting director of the PT program. In addition, she served students and patients as an educator, clinician, and founder of DMU's annual summer camp for individuals who experience stroke. Her many efforts have contributed significantly to our physical therapy department's excellence and innovation. Thank you, Dr. Mercuris. <laughs> also receiving emeritus status is Dr. Robert Yoho, who's in the audience. Dr. Ro Robert Yoho retired in 2021 as Dean of the College of Podiatric Medicine and Surgery. Dr. Yoho joined the University of Osteopathic Medicine and Health Sciences, now DMU, in 1993 as an associate professor, rising to associate dean, interim dean, and finally the permanent dean of the College of Podiatric Medicine and Surgery in 1997. Thanks to his leadership, the college offers a rigorous curriculum that equips its graduates to achieve board exam scores, pass rates, and residency placement rates that consistently exceed those of their peers at other podiatric medical schools. For more than two decades, Dean Yoho, formerly Dean Yoho, has been a mentor to alumni who are leaders in professional organizations, published researchers, and of course, outstanding physicians. We all want to thank 
Dr. Robert Yoho. All of us at the university are excited to watch what members of the class of 2022 will go on to accomplish. And we look forward to continuing to engage with you as the newest members of Des Moines University Alumni Association. Graduates, you are in, a, in very good company as you join an illustrious community of more than 15,100 DMU alumni who practice and serve in all 50 states. To the family and friends joining us today, thank you for the many ways you have supported, encouraged, and cheered on your students. Thank you for believing in them, even when they may have doubted themselves. You all can share our confidence and pride that members of the Des Moines University Class of 2022 are going to be excellent healthcare professionals and leaders. Graduates, that is my challenge to you. Be the excellent healthcare professionals and leaders our world needs more than ever. In 2020, when I spoke at commencement, we were in the middle of a worldwide healthcare crisis, the first wave of COVID-19 cases. That year, thanks to frontline healthcare workers, public health officials, and scientists, we thought we were in a better place with effective vaccines, and greater knowledge about the spread and control of the coronavirus. However, then Omicron variant fueled a new wave of the pandemic. Perhaps as insidious as that has been the spread of disinformation about coronavirus, the sharply divisive opinions about the disease, and false claims about science and health. All have taken a great toll, including on the healthcare and public health professionals seeking to lead us out of the darkness. So great needs, such great needs create great opportunity that I urge all of you to seize. The opportunity to use and share your wisdom, speak with reason, and lead with compassion. This is no small task I'm asking you to take on, but I know you are all ready for it. You are Des Moines University graduates who gain exceptional preparation for your professions. You heroically weathered the past two years that have been like none other in our lifetimes. You navigated the uncertainties, tragedies, stress, and seemingly endless ad adaptations from day to day and sometimes even hour to hour, all while remaining steadfast about your why, your commitment to make the world a better place. This is the time, your time, to take bold action and speak out loudly against the disinformation and disparities that diminish our humanity. This is the time to seize opportunities, indeed the responsibility we all have to make our world safer, healthier, and more equitable. Graduates, you have demonstrated you have the power and purpose to do just that. Draw strength from your past experiences, Perhaps there were moments when all of you, all you wanted to do was get a little more sleep, a better grade in pharmacology, fewer exams in microbiology, or please, no more Zoom sessions. Yet you soldiered on and you succeeded. I'm sure there were times, as for all of us, when you felt it would be easy to despair over so many inequities in our society and easy to give in to the cynical conviction that nothing can be done. Yet you work to make your part of the world better, whether you comforted a patient, volunteered in the community, or encouraged a classmate. You completed your Des Moines University degree, degree which is truly an achievement during unprecedented times. Now you can use your degree to achieve other things, to contribute in new ways, and to enhance our quality of life. Let your new work began. On behalf of the faculty, trustees, and all others in the Des Moines University community, I extend thanks to the families and friends who join us today to celebrate the individual and collective achievements of our graduates. To the class of 2022, please enjoy celebrating this great day and go forward ready to make tomorrow a better day. 
Des Moines University is so proud of all you have accomplished and all that you would do in your service to others. It is now my pleasure to invite the Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Dr. David Kapaska, member of the College of Osteopathic Medicine Class of 1986, to deliver greetings to our graduates and guests. Dr. Kapaska. Thank you, Dr. Franklin. As guardians of the university's mission and academic excellence, the members of the Board of Trustees are delighted to extend greetings to all gathered here today. We are extremely proud to recognize the talented students and to extend our congratulations to them as well as the faculty. We applaud each and every one of you and wish you a successful future dedicated to the care of patients and populations. We are also pleased to recognize and congratulate the alumni who are here today to celebrate the anniversary of their graduations and to reflect on careers dedicated to serving the needs of their patients and their communities. From all of us in the Board of Trustees, I'd like to give you our very best wishes uh, to each of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Kapaska. Now, I'm pleased now to introduce our commencement speaker. Dr. Richard Pitts, a 1973 DMU graduate, has been a leader in all aspects of health care. He began his career in emergency, occupational, and preventive medicine, and has since combined the caring component so essential in patient care with broad expertise in organizational leadership, patient safety, clinical outcomes, and finance. He's a champion in making high quality health care more accessible to all people. Dr. Pitts has been a leader in tackling some of the most challenging issues in healthcare management. In various roles at Kaiser Permanente in Orange County, California, he was responsible for the development and implementation of difficult change projects in a service area with 410,000 members, 800 physicians, 6,000 employees, and a $1.8 billion annual budget. At Arrowhead Regional Medical Center in Colton, California, he provided leadership for a complex full-service teaching hospital with, 500 mil with a $500 million budget and attending staff of 400 physicians, 400 residents, and student physicians in training. As Vice President of Clinically Integrated Networks and Senior Medical Director of St. Joseph's Heritage Healthcare in Orange County, Dr. Pitts orchestrated a system-wide organization of several separate units and built relationships with physicians across Orange and Los Angeles counties. Later, as outpatient medical director for Prospect Medical Systems in Orange County, he oversaw overall population health measures, worked to standardize best treatment practices, and developed and implemented a region-wide education program on behavioral health and addiction for the organization's entire nursing staff. Earlier this year, Dr. Picks took on a new role as Chief Medical Officer at Cal Optima, a county-organized health system in Orange County that provides health coverage programs for low-income families, children, older adults, and people with disabilities. He epitomizes the organization's mission to serve the health of its nearly 900,000 members with excellence and dignity through its network of more than 10,400 physicians and specialists and 41 acute and rehab hospitals. Already during his tenure, Cal Optima approved a $100 million investment in technology to reduce treatment delays and barriers and perform annual assessment of each member's social determinants of health. It launched a collaboration with CalFresh, the state's largest food program for low-income people, to combat rising food insecurity and expand access to nutritious foods. In addition, Cal Optima recently awarded the single largest grant in its history, $50 million, to the Coalition of Orange County Community Health Centers to enhance access to care 
improve quality outcomes, and strengthen the healthcare safety net. Throughout his distinguished career, Dr. Pitts' top priority has always been making care more accessible, more high quality, and most cost effective. He also has prioritized lifelong learning to stay relevant amid constant change. In addition to his DO degree, he earned a PhD in management and decision sciences and numerous certificates in entrepreneurship, management, finance, business analytics, and other areas. Last year, he became one of the first four Harvard Business School online students to master a new level of achievement, a certificate of specialization in strategy. He uses his knowledge and expertise not only to benefit patients and organizations, but also to coach and mentor executive and frontline positions and non-physician executives. I'm so delighted to welcome this visionary osteopathic medical leader back to Des Moines University. Dr. Pitts, it is my distinct honor to invite you to the podium to deliver the commencement address for the Des Moines University class of 2020. Dr. Pitts. I was sitting, uh, listening to that, trying to figure out who she was talking about. I mean, that's quite a list. Um, I would like to make sure everybody knows that I still have to put the trash out on Monday morning. Um, you know, there's still, still things you have to do. This is uh, beyond exciting. I look across this crowd and I go, holy moly, look at the people. This is just incredible. I'm so proud of what DMU has done. I'm so proud of everybody who's here. It's just incredible. What a transition over the decades. So I'm gonna start with the traditional opening. President Franklin, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, graduates, family and friends who supported this graduating class, and everyone else who's here today. This is an incredible sight from where I'm standing. The future of healthcare is right here in front of me. Not many people get to say that but it's so true. As I begin, I want to thank my wife, Colleen, for her support over the last 45 years. I deeply appreciate it, and I love you, and I know you're out there somewhere, but I can't see past the first row with the lights. Uh, I also want to dedicate my commencement address to three very special people. Alice Blunt, her husband, Dr. James Blunt, and Andrew Card Sr. Without their mentoring and leadership, I likely would not be here in front of you today. They were incredible. So when President Franklin called me a few months ago and asked me to be here today to deliver the commencement address and share some leadership lessons, I was honored and humbled. I still am today. I, I did think for a moment she was taking a big chance because she's never heard me speak before. And, and so I thought I'd better call her back. So I called her back and I said, uh, do you have any recommendations, any advice? And she said, no, not really. And they said, well, wait a minute, I do have one bit of advice. She said, uh, please be kind, please be brief, and then please be gone. So, so I'm gonna do my best to do that. Uh, standing in front of you today makes me realize that it's not the time period since I graduated from DMU, then College of Osteopathic Medicine, that really matters. It's what happened during that time approximately 140,000 patient encounters, about 200 babies delivered, not always in the best of circumstances, and I'll be more about that later, and being with about 2,500 people at the time of their passing. But the real amazing thing for me has been to the opportunity to enhance healthcare of over three million people during my time in healthcare leadership roles. So my intention today is to share some stories with you so that I can help explain a few lessons. I think the stories will help to connect that. So please join me as we spend a few moments together thinking about leadership. And by the way, these are lessons I think that everybody here can consider, not just the graduates. So while preparing, I, I did do a Google search like everybody does, and I found out an amazing number. 58,000 books in print on leadership. 58,000. 
So then it dawned on me that leadership is like air. It's all around us. It's everywhere. The news will report good leaders, bad leaders, and in-between leaders. But you know, then there's you and I trying to lead our lives. We're leading our lives, sometimes in chaos, sometimes during difficult times. But self-leadership is key, not only to a good life, but it's also key when you take on formal leadership roles. And I know this class today this is full of academic disciplines, not just physicians. So I want to point out that you don't have to be just a physician to be a leader. I want to talk about one particular lady I know in Orange County. Her name is Annette Walker. Annette Walker started out as a lab scientist doing blood tests. And she's now risen to be the president of the City of Hope in Orange County one of the premier cancer treatment and research centers in the country. But it's important to keep in mind, whether you're a physician or in an administrative role, that you must first establish yourself as a competent physician or a competent administrator or a competent whatever your major is. You will not get into meaningful leadership roles if you're not competent in your area. It's a sign of credibility for the people that you'll be working with. As I mentioned earlier, I want to share some stories, and I'd like to begin now. In 2013, I took the position as chief medical officer of a large, complex teaching hospital. 450 beds, a very acute psychiatric unit, 120,000 ER visits every year, 400,000 outpatient visits, and a whole bunch of other things going on at the same time. About six weeks after I took that position, the Board of Supervisors, they're the county government, called me downtown. I thought, gee, I must have done something wrong. You know, if I mean, it was like, show up now. And I got down there waiting to be fired. I thought I had done something wrong. And it turns out that the CEO of the hospital had quit. And they looked at me and said, we'd like you to do both jobs. The CEO of a large hospital and the CMO of a large medical group. So I said, well, OK, I'll do it. The lesson here is that sometimes people see things in you that you don't see in yourself. You will ultimately, but if somebody offers you a chance for leadership and you have an interest in leadership, grab it. Figure out the details later. They see something in you that you don't see in yourself just yet. It's critically important, excuse me, important if you want to move forward. I really enjoyed my time as a hospital leader, but I had no idea how I would be challenged. And we're going to talk about three of those challenges and then a patient case at the end. So there was an endoscope crisis, there was an Ebola crisis, and there was a terrorist attack. A key leadership from these three events is that you will likely be tested in unimaginable ways when you're in a leadership position. While there are many more tests, these are the three that stood out for me during my hospital years. So let's relive them a bit. So endoscope crisis, a lesson in trust and credibility. Shortly after I arrived in the hospital in 2013, there was one news story after another of people having an endoscopic procedure and dying. And these were at very good, high quality hospitals. If I mentioned the names, you would probably recognize them. So one morning, actually every morning at 6.30 a.m. as I was driving in, I usually got a call from one of the members of the Board of Supervisors saying, asking me a question. This question was from the chairperson, and she said, are we going to be in the news today? What she meant by that, are we going to have a hospital death related to endoscopic infection? And I was able to tell her with certainty, no. And the reason no is because I had already taken action and I ordered every endoscopic procedure except for emergencies to be stopped. I ordered that all the endoscope scopes be gas sterilized. That is a special type of gas that kills virtually anything and everything. And then one step further, we were going to culture every one of those scopes to make sure there's no dangerous bacteria present. So we had no deaths, we had no illnesses. And the lesson there is look ahead. As a leader, you must look ahead. See things that other people don't see. Take action. Take bold action. If it's the right thing to do, no one's going to question it later because it was the right thing to do. 
During the endoscope crisis, I had an incredible number of things to manage besides the political aspects of being in a public hospital. That's almost first and foremost. Patient safety is first in my mind, but in the politicians, there are other things. The key problem, though, was trust. Trust. I was a new unknown entity. The level of scrutiny of every single thing I did was intense. It took a while to build credibility. So how could I rapidly build trust in a low trust environment? What worked was an incredible amount of communication and transparency. Tell people what you're going to do. Tell them why, but still do it. Make sure you're doing the right thing. Get some input. So again, if you see something, you have to take action. You can't wait, especially if there's danger. Next crisis, Ebola crisis, a lesson in direct leadership. So in 2014, there was a single case of Ebola in a Dallas hospital, but it led to two healthcare workers becoming critically ill, likely because of poor information on what it takes to protect a healthcare worker from Ebola. So I was driving down the road when I heard this at 6.30 in the morning again, and I knew that the likelihood of an Ebola outbreak in my hospital was pretty low. But I also knew that the likelihood of panic among my nursing staff was near 100%. And you can't have a nursing staff with panic. So I called my executive assistant and I said, hey, I need these 15 people in my meeting room at 8 o'clock, no excuses, no cell phones, no laptops. You will be our communication tool. Totally focused. I have to admit, I got some of this from my short time in the Navy being very direct in those situations. So we all got together, and I told them, we're not leaving until we have an Ebola plan, pure and simple. We crafted out a plan within nine hours. And 54 hours later, we had trained 154 hospital workers to be able to provide care safely inside of a lethal environment. We constructed a biosafety level four, which is like the highest way you've seen uh, protecting people you've seen with the bubble suits on, they take showers going in and out. We put that all together in about 60 hours. So how do we do that? Direction, but with collaboration. What's the lesson? You have to be able to take swift, clear, and demonstrable action as a leader in a high-risk environment. There is no room for dilly-dallying around. Terrorism. This is a lesson you, as you might imagine, there were a lot of lessons to come out of a terrorist attack. It was in 2015. I chose this one to demonstrate that it's important to train your people well and then get out of their way. Do not try to insert yourself once your teams are trained. So it was about 11 a.m. I remember this day. I can close my eyes and I can see everything. 11 a.m., December 2nd, I'm sitting at my desk. The senior leadership of the hospital was away to Sacramento talking about financial help for the county hospital. I thought, oh boy, I have a few extra hours. I can plan my entire strategic plan for the next year. How lucky am I? What could possibly go wrong? I never have that thought anymore. Literally, when that thought cleared my brain, the door flew open. My executive assistant said, you need to come now. The police need to talk with you. There's been a shooting. And you know, ironically, I thought, well, so we get lots of shootings. We're a county hospital in a poor area, and we have, we're a trauma center. We get shootings all the time. Soon, I quickly realized this was nothing, uh, this was not ordinary. There were dozens of casualties. It happened just about a mile and a half down the road at a government facility, county government facility. We are a county government facility. The fog of war was evident. We had no idea what was going to happen next. The fear was we're a county government, it was attack against the county government, we're next. We had one armed police officer. We had a bunch of um, you know, security guards unarmed, they didn't have anything. So the police officer said, can we lock down the hospital? I mean, what do you think I'm going to say? Of course, hurry up, do it right now. So we, we got things under control. and. Uh, I had to get to the command center. We have a command center for disasters. That's the nerve center, the central nerve center for the hospital when something goes wrong. 
and I had to get there. Now you can imagine, everybody in the hospital by this point in time knows what's going on. We had checkpoints in place. I had panicked employees coming up to me, grabbing my arm, saying, what should I do, what should I do? I had to basically quickly say things will be fine, but basically ignore a lot of people and get to the command center. That was my responsibility. I couldn't be dragged down into other issues. I got to the command center, people had their brightly colored vests on, designating all the different things they were supposed to do, and the incident commander was there. I was not the incident commander. My job was clear and simple. I needed to monitor the dynamic macro issues of a terrorist attack. Not an easy feat. I had the sheriff, I had the FBI, I had the county administration just constantly calling me, what are we doing, how are we doing it, and so on and so forth the lesson. You need to train your people well all the time. They need to be prepared. You can't train in the middle of an emergency, so you have to be ready. They need to stay focused on their job. You can't get them being pulled away from what they know to do. But this was an unusual situation. This was an attack. They were afraid. Finally, I had to just keep pushing people away as much as that's not my personality push them away and say, you have people to go to, use those people. And then finally I was able to deal with the issues at hand. So in my case, it was to watch the big picture. I needed to stay, and this is a business term, I had to stay in my swim lane. A lot of people make a mistake of getting out of their swim lane and getting involved in things that they're really not responsible for. So you need to really focus on staying what you need to focus on. That was a day I wished had never happened. But I have to tell you, the hospital performed incredibly well. We saved all six of the victims that came to us. Unfortunately, there were many more that didn't survive. But again, it was a day I wished it didn't happen, but I'm proud of how the hospital responded. And my final lesson will come from my time as an emergency medicine physician. And the lesson comes from a two pound baby boy. So let me frame this story by saying that I've loved every minute of my life as a physician. Every minute. Never had a doubt. Ever. So that doesn't mean it's always been easy. I don't think it's hard for you to imagine that as an emergency physician I've seen some pretty difficult situations. But I really want to share this one particularly gratifying experience with you. So I was on duty by myself one afternoon when the ER suddenly exploded with activity and literally exploded. It was quiet and all of a sudden the paramedics came blasting through with a man having a heart attack. Shortly thereafter, a woman who was pregnant came in in shock. So she needed to get to the OR right away. We were doing the things we needed to do for the heart attack patient. I had a whole bunch of other patients there needing care. I thought I had everything in control. All of a sudden, the ER door flew open again. And a lady, I don't know who she was to this day, she screamed at the top of her lungs, we need a doctor outside. That's never a good sign. And so uh, I paused for a moment and uh, I did have that chill go up my spine. This is so much for the illusion of being in control. So I took a deep breath ran out to the waiting car where I found a woman lying on her back, one leg over the back seat, one leg over the front seat, undressed from the waist down. There were about 15 people, onlookers, trying to figure out what's going on, but they were paralyzed. They didn't know what to do. So this poor lady was in active labor trying to deliver a very premature 28-week-old fetus. As I examined the terrified woman, things went from bad to worse. I did an internal exam, and I found out that the baby's cord, the umbilical cord, was wrapped around the baby's neck, not once, but twice. And uh, things looked pretty grim. So I did without, you know, what was, what I needed to do, you know, without some faster intervention, this child was gonna die. So I said a small prayer under my breath, and I did what was needed to deliver the baby. Yet the baby was blue at birth. No heartbeat, no breathing. Almost simultaneously with the delivery of the baby, I pulled up my shirt and put the baby right against my bare skin. In the first few seconds of life, warmth can be more critical than oxygen to a child like that. 
So I ran running into the ER. Now, nobody in the ER knew what I was doing outside. And I pull up my shirt, and out popped a baby. <laughs> One of my nurse friends, Linda Taylor, <laughs> literally screamed louder than that other lady, oh my god, Dr. Pitts just had a baby. Back to the real story. So this little child was right on the brink. So I was able to get a little tube into its airway, a tiny tube into the umbilical stump for fluids. The nursing staff were already doing one finger CPR. Things were pretty grim. And then about 20 minutes of doing really intense resuscitation, I noticed something that looked like the sunrise in the dead of night. A little pink area showed up on the chest. The pink area went up into the neck, and then it went up into the head. It went across the shoulders, down the tiny arms, and then down into the stomach and the tiny legs. And I thought, oh my god, this, this little kid's alive. So over the next hour, as a team, we were able to stabilize that little baby. How little? About the size of a 12-inch submarine sandwich. That's what we're talking about. Tiny. So we're able to transfer the child over to Children's Hospital. And uh, I like to say at the end of that intense hour of effort, all three of us, the newborn, the mother, and me, survived that frightening experience. <clears throat> So six months later, a woman came to the emergency department lobby, and I was asked to go out and meet her. So she asked, um, do you remember me? I said, no. And she's holding a little boy. And she said, well, do you remember the pregnant woman lying on the back seat of a car? And then it hit me what, what this was about. And uh, yeah, I choked up. And then she handed the little boy over to me to hold. And I thought, this little guy uh, is tough. I mean, he, he, should be, he should be gone. But he survived. Not because of me. You know, I had a piece of it. was the team. Don't ever forget the role of teams when you work in emergency medicine or elsewhere. So the professional lessons, no matter whether you're a physician or whether you're in another role, that you have to be ready for emergencies. And my brother-in-law, who's a naval aviator, 400 carrier landings to his credit, pointed out that in an emergency, you won't rise to the occasion. You will default to your training. Critically important to understand. So be prepared, be ready to default to your training, and never, never panic. So we're coming to the end of our time together, and I'll just quickly summarize the lessons. Endoscope crisis, think ahead to see what others don't see, take action. Ebola crisis, in times of danger, take swift, clear, and demonstrable action as the leader of a team. Terror attack, stay focused on what you need to be focused on at the time. Do not get tunnel vision. Let your well-trained team function and don't get in their way. And the two-pound baby boy, nearly all that you will do in healthcare will require teamwork. Train well, train often, in an emergency, you will default to your training, whether it be in patient care or an administrative role. It has truly been an honor and privilege to be with you here today. My wife and I applaud your accomplishments to this point in your career. We both wish the best for you and your families forever. Good luck in all your future endeavors. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Pitts. At this point, Dr. Pitts, Dr. Kapaska, will you please draw me back at the podium? Dr. Pitts's expertise, service, and advocacy have had a profound and positive impact on thousands of people. He served as a leader in numerous medical organizations and established collaborations with other entities to enhance the quality of life of patients and communities. Dr. Pitts's distinguished career 
has spanned clinical practice in medical group and hospital leadership in government, academic, and nonprofit medical centers. He has demonstrated outstanding versatility and skills in facilitating change management, improving patient safety in clinical outcomes, managing financial resources, and building relationships at all levels. In all his endeavors, Dr. Pitts inspires us. In whatever health profession we have chosen to always stay true to the central mission of our work, to make life better and healthier for people and populations. He inspires us to seek new knowledge throughout our careers and in our lives so that we can better fulfill that critical mission. He's a role model that I encourage all of our graduates today and tomorrow to aim to emulate. So by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Des Moines University and by the State of Iowa, I do hereby confer upon Dr. Richard T. Pitts the degree of Doctor of Science, honoris causa, of which this citation will be a witness forever. Congratulations, Dr. Pitts. Just a short uh, thank you. Um, I will accept this on behalf of all the patients that I have had the privilege to take care of, and all the patients and whatever else degree you have in medicine on behalf of those patients as well. I'm highly honored, I'm humbled, and I want to thank the university, thank Dr. Franklin, and thank the Board of Trustees, and thank my wife for putting up with me for 45 years. She's the best, thank you. At this time, the deans will now present their graduating classes in preparation for the awarding of the degrees. I'm pleased to introduce first Dr. Wallace Bouvet, Dean of the College of Health Sciences. Will the graduates from the College of Health Sciences, the Healthcare Administration Program, the Public Health Program, the Physician Assistant Program, and the Physical Therapy Program, please stand. President Franklin, members of the Board of Trustees, honored guests, on behalf of the faculty, I present to you the graduating class for the year 2022 of the College of Health Sciences. The members of the faculty of the College of Health Sciences have evaluated the candidates and endorse all of these students as worthy of having the degree Master of Healthcare Administration, Master of Public Health, Master of Science in Physician Assistant Studies, and Doctor of Physical Therapy conferred on them. It is with great pride that I present the class of 2022 of the College of Health Sciences. Please be seated. Good morning. I am Dr. Kevin Smith, Dean of the College of Podiatric Medicine and Surgery. Will the graduates from the College of Podiatric Medicine and Surgery please stand? On behalf of the faculty, I present the 2022 graduating class of the College of Podiatric Medicine and Surgery. The faculty members of the college have evaluated the candidates and endorse each of these individuals as worthy of having the degree Doctor of Podiatric Medicine confer conferred on them. President Franklin, it is my pleasure to present the class of 2022 of the College of Podiatric Medicine and Surgery and the newest members of the podiatric medical profession. Please be seated. Good morning. I am Dr. Stephen Helm, the Dean of the College of Osteopathic Medicine. 
will those graduates from the College of Osteopathic Medicine, the anatomy program, the biomedical sciences program, and the doctor of osteopathic medicine program, please stand. On behalf of the faculty, I present to you the 2022 graduating class from the College of Osteopathic Medicine. The members of the faculty of the College of Osteopathic Medicine have evaluated the candidates and endorse all of these students as worthy of having the degree Master of Science in Anatomy, Master of Science in Biomedical Sciences, or Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine conferred on them. President Franklin, it is with great pride that I present the class of 2022 of the College of Osteopathic Medicine. Please be seated. I am pleased to receive these candidates by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of this university and by the state of Iowa, I do hereby confer upon each graduate the degree for which you have been endorsed with all of the honors, rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining to this degree of which your diploma will be a witness forever. You are hereby recognized as graduates and now alumni of Des Moines University. Congratulations to all of you. So now we will recognize the degree recipients individually with the procession of the graduates. With the Public Health and Healthcare Administration students, please proceed forward. I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Rochelle Reimer, Chair of the Department of Public Health, who will announce the names of the graduates for the Healthcare Administration Program and the Public Health Program. We will begin with recognition for the graduates in the Healthcare Administration Program who have earned a Master of Healthcare degree, Tasha D. Colette. Marima Dizdar Dizdarevich, my apologies. Samantha Lee Faulkner. Chantel Marie Fulford. Katie Lamori. Danielle McCoy. Abby L. Rouse. Raquel Ralph, Taylor E. Wyckoff. Des Moines University now recognizes those graduates who earned the Master of Public Health degree, Jennifer Bender, Courtney Lynn Crawl, Vanellis Davina Mendez, Brian Vander Hayden, graduate with distinction. Benjamin Williamson. Good morning, my name is David Roberts. I'm an assistant professor in the physician assistant program and a member of the class of 2017. I will be announcing the names of students who are receiving the Master of Science degree in Physician Assistant Studies. Zoe Amanda Al. Miranda Ayers Berkren. 
Adela Byrich, also received Master of Healthcare Administration degree. Shelby Kyan Bearheels. Rachel Blagg. Lauren E. Bobst. Morgan Shelby Bone. Troy M. Bunch. Kylie L. Bunt. Abigail Karachi, graduate with distinction. India Chapman. Josh Davis. Tyler DeYoung. Emily M. Delzer. Morgan Lee Frazee. Rebecca Gertzen. Paige Gorst. Zachary Michael Haynes. Brian Michael Jasper. Jordan David Johnson. Rebecca Mary Kennedy. Sarah Elena Kennedy, also received Master of Science and Anatomy degree. Abigail J. Lang. Catherine Ann Lottermoser. Carly Morgan Marshall. Victoria Meyer. Claire Moore. Jacob Nagel. Shana K. Piersma. Patrick Reed. Madison Macy Reynolds. Lorraine C. Rogue Jones, also received Master of Science in Anatomy degree. Nicole Ruland. Zainab Saeed. Emily Ann Schmid. Rachel Schmieding. Taylor Lee Scott. Cassidy Aaron Smith. Madeline Ann Stenzel. Madison Stonewall. Lauren Nicole Swan. Louis Shell B. Villamore. Emily Deanne Von Wald. Haley Marie Wilcox. Audra Lynn Wilson. Kelly Marie Wong. Hello, my name is Holland Taylor. I am the department chair and the program director of the physician assistant program and a proud graduate of the class of 2007. I will now be administering the physician assistant oath. Will the PA graduates, as well as any physician assistants that may be in the audience or on the platform, uh, please uh, join me. You may also stand. 
I pledge to perform the following duties with honesty and dedication. I will hold as my primary responsibility the health, safety, welfare, and dignity of all human beings. I will uphold the tenets of patient autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence, and justice. I will recognize and promote the value of diversity. I will treat equally all persons who seek my care. I will hold in confidence the information shared in the course of practicing medicine. I will assess my personal capabilities and limitations, striving always to improve my medical practice. I will actively seek to expand my knowledge and skills, keeping abreast of advances in medicine. I will work with other members of the healthcare team to provide compassionate and effective care of patients. I will use my knowledge and experience to contribute to an improved community. I will respect my professional relationship with the physician. I will share and expand knowledge within the profession. These duties are pledged with sincerity and upon my honor. You may be seated. Hello, I am Dr. Oops. Hello, I am Dr. Julie Runnebaum, Associate Professor within the Doctor of Physical Therapy Program. We will now recognize the graduates of the Doctor of Physical Therapy Program. Hooding the graduates are Dr. Michelle Brown and Dr. Tracy Porter. Dr. Danny Anderson. Dr. Michelle Atchison. Dr. Grace Austin. Dr. Callie Ann Boffman. Dr. Kylie Jo Behrens. Dr. Riley Berg. Dr. Lance Briard. Dr. Jamie Bush. Dr. Cole Daniel Crawford. Dr. Mitchell Daly. Dr. Allison Davidson. Dr. Spencer Deerfield. Dr. Alyssa Lynn Dittmer. Dr. Austin Ellis. Dr. Madison Farron. Dr. Dustin Michael Ferris. Dr. Zach Hillman. Dr. Kyra Alyssa Hoffman. Thank you. Dr. Danae Leanne Holtman. Woo! 
Dr. Alexandra Hutchinson. Thank you. Dr. Taylor Austin Illig. Dr. Alyssa Lynn James. Thank you. Dr. Marcus Paul Johnson. Dr. Zachary Jewer. <laughs> Dr. Laura Sue Judd. Dr. Brandon Robert Krogman. Thanks. Dr. Jennifer Lockhart. Thanks. Dr. Sean Marion. Dr. Anthony McBroom. Thanks. Dr. Maria McDonough. Thanks. Dr. Morgan Janet Mills. Thanks. Dr. Elise Olson. Dr. Abigail Catherine Ponick. Dr. Madison Parks. Dr. Joshua Peters. Dr. Morgan Lynn Prescott, also receiving Master of Healthcare Administration degree. Dr. Nathaniel S. Rossford, graduate with distinction. Dr. Christina Irene Salazar. Dr. Justice Keith Sherman. Dr. Hannah Shield. Dr. Kyle Sickles. Dr. Mason Spear. Dr. Sean Studer. Dr. Summer, Summer Rose Thibodeau. Dr. Troy Tigges. Dr. Rebecca Trost. Dr. Travis Tupper. Dr. Kylan Ryan Tutton. Dr. L. Faith Vandihar. Dr. Mo. Bongza. Dr. Jackson Yoder.
Good morning. My name is Tracy Bush, and I have the privilege of serving as the program director for the Doctor of Physical Therapy. I am also an incredibly proud alumna of Des Moines University's Physical Therapy Program, class of 1995. Um, I have the honor of helping lead our graduates in their oath. At this time, however, I'm going to break with tradition. I would like to invite Dr. Kathy Mercurius to join me. As our emeritus faculty member, she has contributed so greatly to the program and to the university. And for graduates, she was a teacher of no other. And I will tell you, she was my teacher 27 years ago. Thank you. So, would the Doctor of Physical Therapy graduates please stand? And I would also like to invite all physical therapists present today in the audience and on the platform party to please also stand and join us as we celebrate our graduates in reciting the physical therapy oath in unison. As I practice the art of physical therapy, I will respect the rights and dignity of all individuals and will provide compassionate care. I will place the welfare of my patients and clients above my own self-interest. I will exercise sound judgment and comply with laws and regulations that govern physical therapy and protect the public from unethical, incompetent, and illegal acts. I will maintain professional competence and promote high standards for physical therapy practice, education, and research. I will address the health needs of society and strive to effect changes that benefit patients, clients, and the community. Thus, with this pledge, I freely accept the responsibilities that accompany the practice of physical therapy. Congratulations, graduates. We're so proud of you. Please be seated. Thank you. Hello. My name is Dr. John Bennett, Associate Professor in the College of Podiatric Medicine and Surgery. I will now announce the grains of the graduates of our college. Hooding the graduates are Dr. Sean Gramberg and Dr. Ashley Dykus. Dr. Amar Okafaji. Dr. Leanne Elizabeth Allen. Dr. Danica Anderson. Dr. Drew Anderson. Dr. Emery Barnes. Dr. Andrew Brown. Dr. Alexa Taylor Bykowski, graduate with distinction. Dr. Ruben Joseph De La Cruz. Dr. Viet Du. Dr. Rufi Mohabin Fasuhidan. Dr. Andrew Ferguson. Dr. Taylor May Filler. Dr. Taylor Fulmer. Dr. Lauren G. 
Giddens. Dr. Toby Page Gunter. Dr. Taylor Hale. Dr. Michaela K. Hayes. Dr. Nathaniel Holt. Dr. John W. Jager. Dr. Sarah Jane Judicus. Dr. Megan Kingston Bartos. Dr. Pavlo Koniskov. Dr. Mary K. Lenu. Dr. Curtis Marker. Dr. Stephen Meyer. Dr. Devin Monk. Dr. Danielle Knack. Dr. Tiffany Fong Nyo. Dr. Devin J. Nee Warner. Dr. Matthew William Novak. Dr. Sarah Palmer. Dr. Connor Bird Reed. Dr. Callie Ann Rush. Dr. Catherine Lee Schmidt. Dr. Michaela Ray Seymour. Dr. Sean Singh. Dr. Anthony Smaldino. Dr. A.J. Solomon. Dr. Jasmine Juan Strozier. Dr. Joseph D. Trimer. Dr. Caitlin Marie Yu. Dr. Leigh Villar. Dr. Sydney Warwick. Dr. Thane Weedham. Dr. Isaac Wilmot.
Dr. Rachel Ann Wu. Normally I'd say uh, good morning, but I think this day is more of a great morning. Um, so my name is Dr. Sean Grambart. I'm the Assistant Dean of Clinical Affairs for the College of Podiatric Medicine and Surgery. And it is truly my privilege to ask the graduates of the College of Podiatric Medicine and Surgery to please rise and recite the podiatric oath with me that appears on the screen. Upon my honor, I declare that I will accept the moral and legal responsibilities which become mine as a member of the podiatric medical profession. Those talents which I may have been endowed will be devoted to aid those who may choose to entrust themselves to my judgment and care. I will abstain from all intentional harm and wrongdoing to my fellow citizens especially from abusing the soul or the body of those who entrust themselves to my professional care. In all good faith, I will support my profession and do what I may to advance its best interest, even at the sacrifice of my personal advantages. In serving my patients, I will minister to their needs in a professional manner to the best of my ability. In all instances, I will do that which will reflect credit and honor on this, my chosen profession. Congratulations. Uh, hello, I'm Dr. Craig Camby, Associate Dean for Academic Curriculum and Medical Programs. Uh, Dr. Jennifer Beatty, Associate Dean for Graduate Medical Education and Student Advancement, and I will recognize the graduates from the College of Osteopathic Medicine. First, we will recognize the graduates of the College of Osteopathic Medicine who earned the Master of Science in Anatomy. Test name, Abdallah. <laughs> Naima Abdurazek. <laughs> Megan May Beveridge. <laughs> Matthew Brook. <laughs> Malia Faith Griffin. Tyler M. Johnson, graduate with distinction. Seth M. Light. Hannah Elise Reisner. We will now recognize the graduates of the College of Osteopathic Medicine who earned the Master of Science in Myobenical Sciences degree. Jeffrey Fultz. Mercedes Foster, graduate with distinction. Adam Garman. Matthew Francis Kavich, Kavak, excuse me. Victoria Mathis. Patrick T. Walsh, graduate with distinction.
We will now recognize the graduates of the College of Osteopathic Medicine earning the Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine degree. Hooding the graduates are Dr. Sarah, Sarah Clayton, Dr. Stephen Harder, Dr. Noreen O'Shea, and Dr. Wayne Wilson. Dr. Stephanie Abbott. Dr. Cole Anderson. Dr. Saad Ansari. Oops. Dr. Michelle Ascension Castor. Dr. Neely Adamanic. Dr. Alyssa Averhoff. Dr. Brian Mark Iotti. Dr. Clara Aziz. Dr. Shreya A. Bonzel. Dr. Tematopi Banwo. Dr. Abigail Bardwell. Dr. Quentin A. Barnes. Dr. Jill Beach. Dr. Jeremiah Bean. Dr. Alex Benben. Dr. Jacob W. Benick. Dr. Carter Bradley Berg. Dr. Elliot Berger. Dr. Grace Binter. Dr. Alexis Block. Dr. Katie Bobadilla. Dr. Nicholas Booker. Dr. Mary Jo L. Botton. Dr. Lewis Manuel Braster. Dr. Stephanie Bruno. Dr. Davis Chambers. Dr. Dylan Chad Chandram. Dr. Henry K. Chang. Dr. Wyatt Shaquin. Dr.
Dr. Ankit Chopra. Dr. Corey Allen Christensen. Dr. Sarah E. Cessna. Dr. Olivia Colombo, also receiving Master of Healthcare Administration degree. Dr. Alexis B. Cross. Dr. Molly S. Kennard. Dr. Fred Paul Davis IV. Dr. Sudam Desai. Dr. Sharon Doden. Dr. Troy Domic. Dr. Danielle Dow. Dr. John Duby. Dr. Taylor Duff. Dr. Ryan Patrick Edens. Dr. Lauren Edmond. Dr. Aaron Nicole Dankert Egham, also receiving Master of Healthcare Administration degree. Dr. Eric Engelsder. Dr. Colin Thomas Erickson. Dr. Kaylin Noel Erickson. Dr. Megan Earl. Dr. Connor Feldes. Dr. Shannon Finner. Dr. Kristen Marie Fisher. Dr. Michael Foster. Dr. Jaron Ken Fowlers. Dr. Amy Folker. Dr. Teresa Fuller. Dr. Calvin Fung. Dr. Charles Gaccione. Dr. Jacob Garner. Dr. Nate Garner. Dr. 
Dr. Tyler Glow. Dr. Daffy Tan Gomadoza. Dr. Bradley Goodwin. Dr. Michael C. Graves. Dr. Jimmy Grell. Dr. Matthew Gunner. Dr. Sabia Gupta. Dr. Stephen B. Halverson. Dr. Nicholas Hansen. Dr. Dallin Harper. Dr. Marissa Halbrick. Dr. Mark James Hedinger. Dr. Joseph Hagedis. Dr. Zoe Marie Heiss. Dr. Emily Nicole Hernandez. Dr. Madison Hesse. Dr. Elizabeth Marie Hall. Dr. Nadia Homedi. Dr. Suna Aliv Hore. Dr. Cody Hughes. Dr. Caden Holland. Dr. Nicholas Huth. Dr. Sarah Lynn Wynn. Dr. Mateen Jalili. Dr. Austin B. James. Dr. Alexander Johnson. Dr. Teju Kappa. Dr. Ayer D. Carnway Tua. Dr. Lakshmi Karaparthi. Dr. Devesh Koshwick. Dr. 
Dr. Jason Kimball. Dr. Catherine Ann Casho. Dr. Harrison T. Kong. Dr. Melanie Jung Mi Kim. Dr. Y. C. Kim. Dr. Caleb Kim. Dr. Bethany King. Dr. William Emmett Kivlin. Dr. Christian Lynn Cladstrup. Dr. Richard Klein. Dr. Derek Kuhn. Dr. Abigail Koski. Dr. Miranda Kramer. Dr. Christian Crothammer. Dr. Hannah Lowe Williams Larson. Dr. Ivan Lazar. Dr. Philip J. Leff. Dr. Yaru Lee. Dr. Brian Nathan Lifshutz also received Master of Science in Biomedical Engineering. Nope, just Biomedical Sciences. <laughs> Dr. James Guanming Lo. Dr. Taylor Lee Lungeon. Dr. Erica Jasmine Loon. Dr. Kirby Lundy. Dr. Peter Ma. Dr. Matthew Joseph Mahoney. Dr. Nisha Mandla. Dr. Paul Deep Singh Mann. Dr. Alyssa Mantiful. Dr. 
Dr. Catherine A. Marciniak. Dr. Macy Markello. Dr. Robert Marker. Dr. Savannah Mayer. Dr. Charles A. Mayu. Dr. Pooja Mayur. Dr. Lauren C. McCormick. Dr. Tyler McGinnis. Dr. Kyle Meek. Dr. David Merkley. Dr. Jason Liebrandt Moore. Dr. Alicia Morley. Dr. Jacob McLean Nelson. Dr. Dakota Nerland also received Master's of Science in Biomedical Sciences degree. Dr. Alexander Nguyen. Dr. Andrew Nguyen. Dr. Jonathan Nillis. Dr. Eric M. Nordhues. Dr. Brittany O'Brien. Dr. Lucas Onimus. Dr. Tanner Olinger. Dr. Jared Olson. Dr. Brenna Ori. Dr. Morgan Ostrander. Dr. Millie Powell. Dr. Christopher Peril. Dr. Jenica Patel. Dr. 
Dr. Vitali Parapolitsa. Dr. Grethel Perez. Dr. Morgan Elizabeth Parrott. Dr. Matthew Peterson. Dr. Elizabeth Rockford Plumer. Dr. Richard Powell. Dr. Tanner Scott Pulsifer. Dr. Spencer Randazzo. Dr. Rebecca Ray Rasmussen. Dr. Ziad Jondali Riffey. Dr. Naveen K. Real. Dr. Katherine Ritter. Dr. Sean Rogers. Dr. Andrew Root. Dr. Sydney Ann Marie Rummins. Dr. Tyler Alexander Rutherford. Dr. Kirsten Sandwell. Dr. Jacqueline Sandweedy. Dr. Haley Amber Shukard. Dr. Derek Schumacher. Dr. McKenna Catherine Sexton. Dr. Ethan Seymour. Dr. Rita A. Shake. Dr. Pranitha Shenwai. Dr. Siva Prakesh Sivaji. Dr. Noah Scants. Dr. Cameron Slife also received 
also received Masters of Science in Anatomy degree. Dr. Luke Joseph Smith. Dr. Christina J. Susu. Dr. Wachapul Salapark. Dr. Victoria Cherie St. Martin. Dr. Zachary Stanick also received Masters of Science in Anatomy degree. Dr. Sydney N. Stanley. Dr. Adam Stryker. Dr. Daniel Stroud. Dr. Hong An Tang. Dr. Rufin Chakunte also received Masters of Science in Anatomy degree. Dr. Trevor John Tursini. Dr. Toby Thomas. Dr. Matt Todd. Dr. Quinton Tompkins. Dr. Andrew Troxel. Dr. Minoja Upugunduri. Dr. Matthew Vaughn. Dr. Hannah Rose Vickland. Dr. Michael Volk. Dr. John Wagner. Dr. Victoria Elizabeth Whitcomb also received Masters of Science in Biomedical Sciences degree. Dr. Brian Thomas Whitley. Dr. Bailey Laurel Widstrom. Dr. Emily A. Willman also received Masters of Science in Biomedical Sciences degree. Dr. Leah Witzel.
Dr. Aaron Wusti. Dr. Molly Wooten. Dr. Betsy Wright. Dr. Howard Tay Yu. Dr. Daniel Zace. Dr. Stephanie M. Zobel. Our final graduates in the class of 2022 for the College of Osteopathic Medicine are the fellows in Osteopathic Manual Medicine. They have spent one additional year training current students in the art and science of Osteopathic Manual Medicine. Dr. Megan May Ellis. Dr. Caitlin Finneran, also received Master's of Science in Anatomy degree. Dr. Isaac Metzler. Would those graduates receiving a Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine degree please stand and recite the oath on the screen with me. I do hereby affirm my loyalty to the profession I am about to enter, of my great responsibility to preserve the health and the life of my patients, to retain their confidence and respect both as a physician and a friend who will guard their secrets with scrupulous honor and fidelity, to perform faithfully my professional duty, to employ only those recognized methods of treatment consistent with good judgment and with my skill and ability, keeping in mind always nature's laws and the body's inherent capacity for recovery. I will be ever vigilant in aiding in the general welfare of the community, sustaining its laws and institutions, not engaging in those practices which will in any way bring shame or discredit upon myself or my profession. I will give no drugs for deadly purposes to any person, though it be asked of me. I will endeavor to work in accord with my colleagues in a spirit of progressive cooperation and never by word or by act cast imputations upon them or their rightful practices. I will look with respect and esteem upon all those who have taught me my art. To my college I will be loyal and strive always for its best interests and for the interests of the students who will come after me. I will be ever alert to further the application of basic biologic truths to the healing arts and to develop the principles of osteopathy which were first enunciated by Andrew Taylor Still. Congratulations.
DO students, you may be seated. We will now have a welcome from the Alumni Association President. It is now my pleasure to introduce the President of the Des Moines University Alumni Association, Jamie Haberl, a 2003 graduate of the MPH and MHA programs. Hello, graduates. This ceremony is always impressive and special. Just as I had the privilege of walking across the stage in 2003, today you experience that singular feeling of pride and accomplishment that comes with earning a professional degree. You now hold the key to changing not only your life, but as health providers and professionals to changing the world one patient at a time or one community at a time. As you fulfill your highest individual hopes, please also remember our common connection as alumni of this great institution and our relationship as ongoing partners in the success of Des Moines University. Congratulations. So at this point in our celebration, it is befitting for the graduates to pay tribute to those who have contributed greatly to their successes. Will graduates today please rise and pay tribute to the guests who are with us? We would encourage everyone, after we are finished with our ceremony, to take time and contact those who have made an impact on your life and helped you through your journey while at Des Moines University. So on behalf of the administration, faculty, and staff at Des Moines University, we commend each of you on achieving this significant milestone. So now my charge to the class, the graduates of 2022. This day is a special day of celebration, achievement, and challenge. We celebrate your successful completion of the requirements for the Doctor of Osteopic, Osteopic Medicine, the Doctor of Podiatric Medicine, the Doctor of Physical Therapy, Master of Science in Anatomy, Master of Science in Biomedical Sciences, Master of Science in Physician Assistant Studies, Master of Public Health, and Master of Healthcare Administration. This is an important milestone and we celebrate it with you. It is also a day when we acknowledge your achievement of a body of knowledge and a set of special skills with which you can now go forth to render special service to improve the health and health care of our state, our nation, and the world. It is a day of challenge, since now many of you must commit to those important next steps that will complete your preparation and training that will confer upon you the eligibility to use those skills as a fully qualified professional in your chosen area of endeavor. These are challenges that you have shown yourselves ready to assume and to master. We extend our congratulations to you and to your families and loved ones. We share in the pride that they feel in your accomplishments and we are as excited as they are about the service you would render and the difference you will make. What an exciting and rewarding future that lies ahead of you. A favorite quote of mine is, know that you will make your living by what you get, but you will make a life by what you give. Go and serve. Commit your part in fulfilling our noble mission and the delivery of medical care and the advancement of knowledge and in strengthening our system of health care. Reach far, dream colossal dreams, set audacious goals, be bold in leadership, and in the name of service to mankind, be possessed of an outrageous ambition to make things better. That is your legacy. The service that you give is partial payment on the investments made by others in you. I therefore charge you to relentlessly pursue knowledge Seek wisdom, give service, and demand excellence throughout your lifetime. I charge you to fulfill the promise of being health professionals committed first to service to our nation's 
rural and underserved citizens with a dedication to prevention, wellness, and the delivery of compassionate, patient-centered care. I charge you to maintain respect for others and to cherish those who have been your greatest champions. Remember that professional integrity is essential to your success as a healthcare professional. So I charge you to also embrace the values of honesty, accountability, collaboration, and inclusiveness as the basic tenets of integrity. I charge you to be honorable and supportive alumni of Des Moines University. See this as an imperative to invest in the next generation of health professionals. I charge you to lead, to inspire, and to serve and be always assured of our enormous pride in you. Congratulations, dream big, and focus your knowledge, energy, and passion on improving the quality of life for all people. Congratulations, class of 2022. And now our closing. These proceedings are now officially concluded. Guests, please remain seated until the recessional is completed. The doors to my left will remain closed until all graduates have walked through the hallway. Graduates will receive their diplomas then, come back to this hall to greet their families and friends. Will the platform party faculty and graduates please rise for the recessional. <laughs>